In this dedicated playlist, let's look into building an integrated financial model. So technically, this is the most advanced work package in the entire course, because a lot of businesses plan their income statement, but they do not properly integrate it with the balance sheet. So if you know how to do this, this will naturally give you an edge. So what will we do in here? We will set up the entire integrated financial model for the integrated business plan. And we will also make sure that the numbers go together with the short-term liquidity model. And to do that, we will follow a three-phase approach, which you can see here on the slide. So first, we will set up the structure and read in the client's actual and plan data. Then second, the most important part of this work package, we will balance the balance sheet and handle special line items. And third, we will prepare the outputs and link the integrated financial model to the short-term liquidity model. So let's have a closer look into the first phase. First, we will set up the setup and config worksheets in the Excel model that we will use for structuring the income statement and balance sheet and configuring a couple other things like variables and constants. Second, we will look into the inputs and interface worksheets that we will use for reading in the client's actuals and plan data. Third, we will have a look into the base plan, which we will use to make the client's plan adjustable, which is important because your job as a consultant here is to challenge the client's plan. Fourth, base and management case, as this is a corporate restructuring case that's coming with a strategy consulting flavor, we need to bring measures to the table to turn around the business. And fifth, checks, we always want to be in the know about what's going on in the model when we apply some changes. So for example, that assets always equal liabilities and equity, no matter what we're doing. Now what? Let me just quickly walk you through the model. So here we have the setup tab and the config tab as mentioned as the first point in the slide. So the idea here is that up here we have the income statement with all those line items eventually resulting in net income. And down here we have the balance sheet starting with the assets. And then this is followed by the liabilities and equity. There are some checks around the model. And down here we already start with the balancing. So here I'm looking looking into working capital, here into the generalization, so balancing the balance sheet in general, and down here balancing because of net income. Here we have all of this on a yearly timeline, and here we have all of this on a monthly timeline, so till the end of 2027. So this case takes place at the end of 2023 slash beginning of 2024. So we plan some three to four years into the future on a monthly timeline. Here we have the config tab. As you know from the first video series on short-term liquidity, these are mostly technical in nature. Let's see what else we got. You already know the accounts and bank loans and interests from the short-term liquidity videos as well. Same for the payroll. Investments and depreciations were also included over there. And this, well, this is new. This is just the actuals. And here we'll forecast or plan for the income statement items as provided by the client. So here we have this on an annual base for 2021 and 2022, and then from 2023 on, on a monthly base. And well, usually you need this here. This is just a mapping. So the client uses, well, some structure and then usually you have some other income statement and balance sheet structure. So you need to map that. And here, as a side note, when you do that in practice, please make sure to also look into the annual reports by the auditor to make sure that the actuals really go along. So you shouldn't report any actuals that are different from what the auditor reported in the NRO report. Here we have the interface tab and that's because, well, as I mentioned here, we need to map this. So as this comes in a different format with different categories and here we have it on, well, the structure that we set up in the input tab before. Let's move on to the next worksheets and here it actually gets interesting because this is already the base plan. So what this does is it reads in the client's plan. So actually these well, columns, which are especially interesting here for the income statement, because for the balance sheet, we do not have a plan by the client. And then this provides for an opportunity to override these. So here we have those interface values 
as provided with a client. And here we have the plan that we come up with. So we can just override this and this will then result in the specific line item. There are some things that we need to watch out for. You may remember that um, I mentioned some items that are particularly relevant for the balancing. These are highlighted in red here, so it's just an indication to really be sure about what one is doing here. So that one doesn't, well, override these um, just in case. Next, we have this tab, and this tab is just, well, what we saw over here, but the plan results out of this. And here it's just, well, just showing those plan line items. In case we didn't plan anything, it just shows what came from the interface. But this is, um, well, aggregated view, so we just see from now on what's relevant. And here it already starts with the measures. So here come the base case measures, three tabs as placeholders. This here is an aggregation of these three tabs. And this here then is the base case, which is just well, the base plan plus these measures. And now we can add the management measures over here, come in the same format as the base case measures. This is an aggregation sum of these three tabs. This is the well management case, including measures. So this is the base plan, not base case, but base plan plus base measures and management measures. Or equivalently, it's the base case plus management measures. And then this is just the overview. So what we see here is, well, the base plan, base case measures, that gives us the base case, and then management case measures, and that gives us the management case. So the management case is the base plan plus base measures plus management case measures. That's the management case. And here at the end, we have these output tabs. We see the midterm liquidity, which indicates the required financing. We see this for the base plan. We see this for the base case. We see this for the management case. We have, well, this aggregated overview of the income statement and also balance sheet for the different cases. We have a short overview of the measures that we'll sure fine tune once we know more about which measures we want to undertake. And here also really important, we get this overview of the checks. And as usual, this info tab, which contains a basic description and a list of to-dos. In the second phase, balancing the balance sheet and handling special line items, we will look into balancing from three different perspectives. First, we'll just balance, well, what is caused by net income. So net income goes into equity and that naturally brings the balance sheet into unbalance. Then we'll have a look into Delta Network and Capital Balancing, which is important because you usually plan that based on KPIs, but I have a couple more slides on that. And finally, we will look into the generalization of this because working capital is just a subset of the balance sheet. So how do we balance the balance sheet in general? Deficit not covered by equity is a special case of handling negative equity. So this can in fact happen and well, you need to shift it to the other side of the balance sheet and I'll show you how to do this. Income taxes are also a bit special because you just pay them well, once a year usually and we will make sure to implement that. Bank loans and interests are also important um, because this is also a bit different from the other items. As for example, we need to also pay interests for the current accounts, which will you use in the balancing. And finally, we have the third phase, preparing outputs and linking to short-term liquidity. So the midterm financing, you already know that output slide from the introduction, the drama. Base plan, base case, management case, well, that's important to derive profitability as we want to return to average EBDA industry margin. Measures, important of course as well, because we want to ensure trackability. So the measures are really what brings the base plan to the base case and management case and will hopefully bring us back to average industry profitability. And eventually we need to link the whole thing to short-term liquidity. That means going beyond the book payables and receivables, as we saw in the first module, and well, introducing a couple of items from the income statement and also indirectly from the balance sheet.